So on this cork installation, we have here a product from Carlisle and Company. It's a random match cork, 36 inch wide. I'm going to show you two methods of installation. Before I do it, I'm just going to tell you, I prefer one of them and I suggest one of them, but I'm going to show you how to do both. Hi, and welcome back to the channel. And we're going to be hanging cork over the skim coat job, the video to which I just posted recently on my channel. What is cork? It's an inert substance that comes from the bark of certain trees. And so you can't get water on it. You see, just coming close. Everybody knows what cork is because we've all opened bottles of wine, right? Well, it's the same exact thing. So we've, we, with that in mind, I don't want to use my pasting machine, which might save me some time, but which might saturate the edges of my, my cork. After you get your measurement, you can take this, anything straight. I like a T-square because we have all factory edges here. And I'm just going to cut a straight line. Across the paper. So we usually identify a top and a bottom. However you do it, just please make sure you're consistent. So the piece that comes off of the roll, I'm identifying as my top, and I put T's up there. Here, I'm putting these. The reason is this. It's not absolutely required that we reverse the strips, but I may want to. Here's why. When you roll wallpaper, let me ask you. Take a look at the roll of wall covering I'm holding. You see the outer part? And then you see the inner part? Well, the outer part is less compressed than the inner part because the inner part is more tightly wound and therefore has more compression. And its profile is more compressed or slightly flattened out. Did you ever wonder why wall covering shades or panels when you have a textured wall covering, the answer is simple. When you compress this stuff, right? This is going to have, if you were to examine this on a microscope and you were to look at the thickness, we can then assume that the wall covering that is not compressed as much as this is, will be a little thicker. And it's, texture will be a little more vibrant and less flattened out. That's really what's going on. When your wall covering is compressed, the texture is slightly flattened out. And here's what happens. The light in the room hits the different parts of your wall covering at different angles. Guess what happens? Looks darker. Have you ever seen a mountain? You've at least seen a picture of a mountain. What's behind the mountain? A shadow, right? Why is that? Because the mountain is blocking the light and then it manifests itself in shade. When light hits your wall covering that has been compressed, more light is allowed onto the wall covering, isn't it? But where it's less compressed up here, what happens? It casts tiny shadows. And this manifests itself in 
a differential in color. It's not really a differential in color, but it's an illusion of a differential in color because when you put a shade on the color, it looks different. It looks like it's a different color. And therefore, people call it paneling or shading, when in reality, it's not really a different color. It's just a manifestation of the compression of your textured wall covering that shows itself to have different levels of raised texture, or at least a raised surface, even if it's not textured. You would agree that after sitting on a shelf for nine months, your wall covering in here is a little bit flatter than your wall covering out here, right? So after explaining that, why reverse it? Why do we reverse the sheets? Here's why. As the sheet opens up, you experience less compression, right? And so the sheet itself has a variation in what appears to be a color differential. But you don't notice it on one sheet, you don't. Because it's just natural that when a sheet opens up, our eyes just accept the, the way the sheet looks from top to bottom. But when you put the next sheet up to it, sometimes, not always, when you flip it, you reduce the effects of this paneling or shading. Most of the time, I would say most of the time, but not always. And so the instructions for this wall covering don't say it's absolutely essential to reverse these sheets one after the other, every other sheet. But as an installer, we know when you have a random pattern match, which means that I can hang one sheet up against the other without matching them, there's no waste. We usually reverse the strips. And if you really diligent about reducing the effects of paneling or shading as the installer you will at least hang it up there a helper will you'll step back and the one who has the best eye will say that's it so the reason why we reverse it is to not always but to reduce the effects of shading because when you interrupt the sheet by cutting it and hang another one next to it Sometimes the variation is so drastic that the only way to reduce it is by reversing it. By reversing it, you're reversing the compression or the direction of the fibers on the front of the wall covering. By reversing every other sheet, you're reversing the direction of the top layer of the material. And so if the material is compressed and the fibers are pointing this way, the next sheet, you can expect, if you reverse it, that the fibers will be pointing that way. You and I can't see these fibers, but you'll see the effect when you put it on the wall. To reduce shading, you, you reverse the strip, and then you're changing the direction of the the top layer of the fibers on the sheet of wall covering. You've, you've seen a carpet, right? When you vacuum your carpet and all of the fibers are going this way and then the kids come in and you can see footprints, right? It's the same idea. You can see a rug's fibers, but you can't see these. Did you know that when a carpet installer cuts his carpet, he makes sure that the pile is facing in the same direction because if it's not it'll look like two different rugs and you know when you vacuum your rug when you pull that vacuum back right it looks like a different color right there you go folks i don't want to beat a dead horse i'm trying to explain but a lot of people don't understand about why wall covering 
needs to be reversed every other sheet. In fact, if you have a symbol on your wall covering and you see one hour going down and one hour going up, that's your cue to reverse every other panel. So let's talk about pasting the back of the wall covering. You can't get glue on the front of the wall covering. And so take a look at the way I'm rolling the glue. I'm rolling the glue against the corner on an angle in order that my roller does not bend over the side and put even the least amount of glue on the facade of my wall covering. I can go in either direction in the middle there. That's not a problem. But when I get to those edges, I want to make sure that I'm rolling not parallel with the edges of the wall covering, but at least on a 45 degree angle. Look at the wall covering. Put the camera, please, right over the wall covering. You cannot see my table, can you? The reason is, is because if you do, that means the table could get glue on it. If the table is exposed, then surely if I go to take my wall covering off, I'm gonna hit the table, I'm gonna get glue on it. You always wanna hang the wall covering a few sixteenths, and I'm, I'm talking about three sixteenths of an inch over the table. That's number one. Two, if you roll straight with the border of the wall covering, you're going to get glue on the other side because look, this pushes down, compresses, and it'll wet the other side of the wall covering. So here's how you would use your roller. You do it on a diagonal angle. So my border is this, my edge is this way. I'm going to, I'm going to come across it diagonally. Why? Because as I cross the border, the roller is being sustained. So if I go like this, my roller is sustained all the way right here to the end. It's practically impossible to hit the other side of that wall cover. Now that the walls have dried after skim coat, we are now applying a wallpaper sizing or primer. And the best one for this installation is going to be Roman 977. And so here we are installing the first piece of our cork. As you noticed, I have overlapped my first piece onto the adjacent wall right over the door. <clears throat> the reason being is that I want to have minimally one eighth of an inch overlap onto the wall over the doorway. Now, a couple of tips and tricks regarding cork. You have to have scissors because you can easily tear cork if you should use a regular knife for cutting your cuts, like the one I have in my hand. And so what you see me doing is using a plastic 8-inch smoother or spatula pressing firmly up against the woodwork around that door in order to make my cut. Now, I will tell you this. Cutting cork is unlike any other thing you've ever cut before. You must press firmly up against the material in order to successfully penetrate and cut all the way through it. If I could compare it to anything, I would say it's like trying to install brittle leaves in corners. How's that? Think of it like that. And think of all of the work you would have to go through in order to get brittle leaves that fall from trees 
and that are on the ground in November. That's a very good way of describing what I'm doing right now. When you dry hanging, I want you to put your tape on the ball cover, get it right up on there, and then take your brush and bring your glue right up against it. Don't go past the middle point on the tape, you know why, because we don't want the glue on the wallpaper. I will tell you folks, this is a challenging assignment, hanging cork. So we have continued reversing our strips. First piece, we put the top at the top. The second piece, we put the top at the bottom. Third piece, we put the top of the wallpaper at the top. Continuing to reverse because after examining the pattern with the wallpaper up against each other, after the first two sheets, we determined it was best to reverse. Second tip for installation is with cork. Go slow when you're smoothing this stuff out. Cork is compartmentalized. What do I mean by that? Take a look at this line here. You see this line? That's a piece of cork. You can see the square. You see the seam of the square? That's not me, that's the manufacturer. And so a 32nd of an inch of cork has been manufactured and glued right there. So if you should be moving quickly with your smoother, you'll pull that right up. So, take your smoother at a close angle 
What do I mean by that? This is too much of an angle. This is too much of an angle. Right up against the wall. A zero to 10 degree angle. You can't rip it. Lots of air pockets with cork. Cork, by definition, is very cellulose, very porous. And so it's constantly taking in air from outside and underneath. So don't be surprised if you have air after you've done your best to get rid of it. But if you install it already and you have an air pocket, don't come up and start, just take a pin, stick it right through it and do this. Pushing the air out, done. Don't try to do this after you install it. You'll ruin it. The same angle you use with the smoother I want you to use with your blade. With the hand you're cutting with, push that blade as close to the wall as you can. Remember I said earlier in the video, not like this, but like this. Big difference. When you do it like this, you're using more of the blade, the shaft beyond the tip in order to help your cut. And then you get a clean cut like this. Clean off our trim, barely touching the wall covering. I'm gonna break off a new blade. Okay. I'm gently rebending, and I do mean rebending because I did this before, but cork likes to go back into its own position. I'm rebending making the profile that I need. Now, here's what I want you to do when you do a cut up against woodwork at the top. Point your, your knife this way toward the ceiling, not like toward the corner. The point should be facing the ceiling. Cork does not stretch, it's very unforgiving. If you point your knife like this and make your cut, you're affording yourself the greatest amount of wall covering to be left on the wall, and you will prevent yourself from cutting off an additional 30 second of an inch. It's a big difference when you're looking at dark cork against white woodwork. Here's what I mean. Instead of like this, can you zoom in? Yeah. Instead of like this, I want you to put your blade like this toward the ceiling and this way you will leave more wall covering on the wall and your cut will look like this so we have continued reversing our strips first piece we put the top at the top, the second piece, we put the top at the bottom, third piece, we put the top of the wool paper at the top. Continuing to reverse because after examining the pattern, with the wool paper up against each other, after the first two sheets, we determined it was best to reverse. Second tip for installation is with cork. Go slow when you're smoothing this stuff out. Cork is compartmentalized. What do I mean by that? Take a look at this line here. You see this line? That's a piece of cork. You can see the square. You see the seam of the square? That's not me, that's the manufacturer. And so a 32nd of an inch of cork has been manufactured and glued right there. 
So if you should be moving quickly with your smoother, you'll pull that right up. So, take your smoother at a close angle. What do I mean by that? This is too much of an angle. This is too much of an angle. Right up against the wall. A zero to 10 degree angle. You can't rip it. Lots of air pockets with cork. Cork, by definition, is very cellulose, very porous. And so it's constantly taking in air from outside and underneath. So don't be surprised if you have air after you've done your best to get rid of it. But if you install it already and you have an air pocket, don't come up and start, just take a pin, stick it right through it and do this. Pushing the air out, done. Don't try to do this after you install it. You'll ruin it. Lastly, we will do our double cut. And I'm taking about a quarter of an inch off of the overlap. You see I have yellow tape on there and it's one inch yellow tape. It gives me room for error and breathing. If I get any glue beyond this thing, I got my yellow tape to catch it. Right at the top, I'm penetrating the cork. You must penetrate it or else you'll be ripping it. I'm satisfied it's penetrated. Now I'm dragging my blade. You see the angle? Please take note of the angle at which I hold this knife. I'm going as close to the wall as I can. What this does is that it prevents you, the installer, no matter how good you might be, from tearing this very sensitive and oftentimes impractical material. Okay, we're going to get a new blade. I refined my my cut line. I can see it if I look close. But remember, it's very forgiving if you don't get it at the exact point. Don't be too far off though. Don't do that. Now, you must be aggressive when you restart the cut or else you'll have a trip mark, a start and a finish. You don't want that. So I'm aggressive, pushing it in. Don't get sloppy here. If there's anything you take your time on with cork, let it be your cuts. Try not to uh, bevel your cut and keep the blade, the side of the blade, up against the fence of your guide. And what will that prevent? It will prevent what appears to be a beveled cut. In other words, when I cut like this, you will, it will be like a factory cut. If I do this with my blade, well, I'm gonna have a beveled cut. And you're going to see the, the, the side of the cork rather than the front of the cork. It's a very important detail when you're cutting wallpaper, any wallpaper, but especially one that has a substantial thickness as this. Okay, substantial. Okay, so now 
I'm going to remove both my, my tape on the underlap, which is in my left hand, and the underlap piece, which is tape plus the, the cork that we're discarding. And I'm pulling upward because if I pull it toward my body, I stress the material so much so that I will render it perhaps weak. And in so doing, I will force the cork to give up its shell. When I do it like this, the angle at which I pull the tape puts the least amount of pressure on the front of the cork and prevents the front of the cork from giving up its facade. Taking a very thin smoother that I check each time for scratches, I gently push up and down. again at a 10 degree angle or less to bring the seams together. Not something you want to rush. And you can see that the results are quite nice. Right before you put up your next sheet, and after you put on your protective tape, I want you to go over the border, right where your new sheet will fall, up against the old one. By doing this, you will prevent a lot of problems with air pockets and dry spots. This is the area that was last glued. And therefore, it's the area that's going to first dry up on you. So just before you put your next sheet, make sure you give it another pass of glue. When you're cutting the seam at the bottom, take a special care to cut this properly. You want to use a very thin and firm device. I'm using a metal 10-inch spatula or taping knife. If you don't use something sharp, you will not force this cellulose, highly absorbent material, which is very soft, into place. You know what it is, it's cork. If you take a cork from your wine bottle and you push your fingernail into it, you can see that it goes in, you can see the dent. Same thing here. If you don't push it sufficiently and dent it sufficiently at the corner, you won't cut enough wall covering and you'll, you'll cut too much wall covering. If you don't press it firmly against the woodwork, you will not have a nice clean cut. What will happen is you'll cut your wall covering short. Here's the other thing. You want to cut on this side of the blade, most especially. You don't want to make this mistake and do it here. This affords you another, at least one sixteenth of an inch of wall covering. Last tip, hold your blade pointing down now. I'll show you the difference. You could do it like this, which would be wrong. You could do it like this, which wouldn't be enough. Or you could do it like this. I'm, that blade is facing down. Then I push my spatula into the woodwork and I push firmly down. I make sure that the cork is pushed into that corner, so much so that the cork just falls right off and you have a nice clean cut. If you don't use a firm blade, 
to cut it with, you might find yourself with an ugly border, either at the bottom or at the top. You can hang the sheet, if you're working alone, in a different manner than the one I've shown in this video. This is what you would do if you were alone, or if you're not alone and you're confident in your ability to hang it without touching this to the glue. Take your sheet or your roll, either one. You can do this with a full roll. I've cut it, I've trimmed it already, this piece. Put it in place as you open it up. One thing with cork, and every other natural wall covering substance, talking about grass cloth, you want to be careful that you don't stress the facade of the wall covering with tools, ideally. When you install it, you don't touch it, ideally. That's impossible. But if you go with that rule, you will put the least amount of objects on your wall cover. If you go with that rule, you'll put the least amount of tools on the front of your wall cover. Right now, I'm just using my hand. And all you want to do is just put it into place. Keeping it straight as you go down. Oftentimes, we stress the material with tools, things, metal, rags. Your hands must be clean. That just, you see, how shiny my hands are right now. They were just cleaned before I did this. And so this is, you see the interaction between friction and the material. Your hand gives it the material oil and your material puts this color on your hands. But what would be worse if I would have just keep dragging a piece of plastic over this? You can put a piece of wax paper over it and simply smooth it out with the wax paper up against it. But I know not to bruise my, my uh, core. And that's, that's why I'm suggesting this way. What we're using for this installation is Dynamite 234. You know I've been a long fan of Romans 880. But I have to tell you that Dynamite 234 remains tacky to the touch even after it dries. You don't want to cut cork at the top or at the bottom until the meat of the wall covering is in place. That goes for any wall covering, but especially <clears throat> a stubborn wall covering such as cork. Could you imagine cutting here and then getting the air pockets out and finding that you're a sixteenth of an inch off as you continue to move the air out of the wall cover?
este de trauma. So while you're installing your cork, please know that although a beautiful product, you should be armed with knowledge, especially when you're dealing with customers who are expecting perfection. And so that is a natural flaw in the cork. And I just put this piece up. Trust me when I tell you I didn't do it. And I will show you, I will show, I'll put a little glue behind that, but I will show you the other side of the cork that has repairs. Now this is a manufacturing repair. See this tape here? Okay, apparently there's a flaw you see right beyond the tape, you have that dark mark. And so the manufacturer knows this and they make a repair before distribution. And so with that in mind, and with this in mind, please know if you're the customer that the product is imperfect, although very beautiful. And if you're the installer, please know that if something comes up with your installation, you have to be armed with knowledge that the product has imperfections in it, such as these three color differentials you're observing on your screen right now. One, two, and three. We've come to almost the end of the job, and we've come to a really crooked corner. You don't want to put cork in a crooked corner. You have to count your losses, and you have to cut it. This will be the first cut corner on the entire job. So we have here about 14 inches. 14 inches from here to here, 14 and a half from here to here. These corners, they look good. Plumb means that it's straight down. It's what a lot of us call level, but it's not level. Level is to a horizontal plane, what plumb is to a vertical plane. This entire corner is off plumb. There's only one way to remedy that, especially with cork. You have to cut it. We will overlap it in the corner. so that this wall will be over this one. And there's a reason for that. Just think about coming into the room and seeing the edge of the, the cut. If you can see the edge, you overlapped the wrong piece. The overlap you can, you can actually see how well plumb it is. You see all my overlap here? And down here I get pretty skinny. When you have a corner that is not plumb, you must establish the point from which you began to the corner first. You cannot concern yourself with this side yet until the point at which you began to the corner is completely in place. If you go against that rule, you're going to have 
a problem. I'm taking this part of my finger, soft, gentle, right into that corner. This corner is off by almost one full inch from the bottom all the way up to the top. So I'm establishing my corner. You see what's happening here? I'm telling this part to get into the corner. You can't see it, but that's what's happening. If you don't firmly establish that corner, you're gonna have a, not a bubble, it's going to be a tension buckle, which is easily remedied by cutting the corner. We'll see if we have to do that. Okay, now I will keep my, I will, it's like a military maneuver. You, you conquer and then you, you don't give it up. Does that make sense? You see what I'm doing? I'm keeping this side in place with this and then I'm trying to put the rest of it in place. So far, so good, but I will not call this a victory yet. Uh-uh. Uh-huh, see that? We'll see if we can remedy that without cutting it. I don't think we will. That would take a miracle to get that out. Okay, we'll cut our corner. No problem. We're going to cut it. You can put your knife in a lot of different places. You're not cutting it in the corner. You're cutting it on this side of the wall. If you cut it in the corner, you'll never be able to join the cork. You have to pass the corner and cut it two sixteenths, which is one eighth of an inch, with this wallpaper on this wall. One eighth of an inch of this onto this wall. It's the only way to do it. Okay, so I cut my seam. I'm putting my overlap onto this piece. Why am I doing this piece instead of this one? You must take the corner that cannot be seen from the room and overlap that corner that cannot be seen over the corner edge of wall covering that can be seen if it weren't covered by your overlap. I can demonstrate it down here for the good folks at home. You see this edge? You see it? If I were to overlap this edge on top of this, you'd see it. Please bring them in close so that they can see this action. This is a lot of work. Because it's off plumb, you must keep moving it back and forth to accommodate the crooked corner. These are buckles. Caused by lack of plumb. how you put cork wallpaper into a crooked corner. So there you have it. This is our Carlisle and Company cork wall covering installation.